Hey guys, this is the second part to the full starter guide for Hypixel Skyblock. And in this one, we're going to be discussing armor, weapons, swords, bows, tools, and enchantments and reforges, which you probably don't know what reforges are, but that's the point of this video. So we're going to start out with the armor. And I'm going to have these sectioned off. I'm not going to uh, put in the late game ones because if you're at that stage you probably don't need this guide anyway so i'm just gonna have all the early game ones in the chest and which ones you should get first which ones are just nice to have so in my opinion the first armor set you should buy is the minor armor now this can probably be got for like five thousand coins on the auction house so it's extremely cheap and it gives a decent amount of defense but it's way better when you are in the mines like uh, the deep caverns is the main thing you'd use these for because the other two mines don't actually have mobs and you can see each piece of this armor dramatically increases your defense bonus when inside of a mine which is nice to have it lets you kind of survive there for a little bit but you shouldn't stay with these too long because again they're not they're terrible outside of a mine and the next Thing you should get is probably lapis armor now this is nice because it gives you a decent amount of defense you can see it gives more than minor armor even though this com this comes enchanted with protection 5 but you can just enchant this and it'd be the same but lapis armor the full set bonus you can see here is what armors have sorry I forgot to explain that and that is it's a bonus you get if you have every single piece on and usually these are worth it to have every single piece of armor on but not always but anyways this one is regeneration regenerates five percent of your max health for every second if you have been out of combat for eight seconds it's not really that good so it's not really worth it you, could, you still have them all on because it's nice to have but not really but the lapis armor uh full set bonus is health increase the wearer's maximum health by 60 which is decent of course a little more health is always nice but the peace bonus is really what where these shine. Now, these grant 50% bonus experience when mining ores. So if you have all four of them on, it's 200% bonus experience. So double experience. And that is really good because a lot of the early game stuff is getting XP to enchant your stuff and everything like that. So yeah, this is really nice. And you can get it for probably about 10,000 on the auction house. So it's still really cheap. And, yeah, alternatively, you can get it from killing lapis zombies in the deep caverns for, like, a long time. But I wouldn't really recommend that because it takes super long. It took me, like, hours just to get three pieces and then I traded for the last one. But, yeah, I'd suggest just buying it. And the next one I would recommend is Hardened Diamond. Now, this is, these two are pretty close together. This is a little bit after. And... I would suggest making this yourself. I would suggest setting up some diamond minions, which we talked about in the last episode, and unlocking the collection. You can see here, if I go to collection, mining collection, diamond, it's, um, where is it? It's at diamond seven, which is 10,000, and it might seem like it would take a while, and it does, but it's definitely worth it. You can get up for, I think, like, probably like, 50,000 on the auction house so it might be worth it to buy it but I don't know you could choose either way and this is just kind of like just generic armor really there's nothing special about it, it doesn't have peace bonus doesn't even have a full set bonus it just gives you a good amount of defense and this can be crafted I should show you the crafting recipe uh, it is crafted with 24 enchanted diamonds just one enchanted diamond it's like normal diamond armor but one enchanted diamond it's really easy to get once you have the recipe and yeah so that's nice and i just took off some of my armor accidentally um the last armor that i would consider to be like early ish game is ender armor and ignore the fact that it has all those stuff there but this was my old set and this is really useful if you're in the end now, the end you unlock by getting combat level 12, which might be hard at first, but you can see mine's 19, almost 20, so eventually it's it's really easy. But 
the good thing about this is the end is really good. It's really hard. It's one of the most end game areas. It probably is the most end game area, actually. So what this does is, if you can see at the bottom there, all stats of this armor piece are doubled well on the end island. Now, the reason that's good is because you can see this has less defense. It has more health, so it's pretty good. And it also doubles those. So let's say I was to wear this. I'd have 95 HP. Well, you get base HP as well, but whatever. This would go up to 190 HP and 100 defense, which is way better than this. So that is really good when you're in the end. It's mediocre when you're outside of the end. But this was my armor for a really long time. It shouldn't be your armor for that long, but... Once you have this, you probably have a decent understanding of the game. You can figure out what to go for next. I would personally recommend dragon armor. A lot of people say to go for, like, um, the cheap dragon armors, like, the really bad ones. I mean, they're still better than this, but I would suggest just skipping that and going for one of the better sets, like, unstable or strong. And that's what I did. I went to strong, but I'm kind of, I kind of just forgot to buy armor for a while, so that's my excuse. But anyways, that's the last one that we're going to cover in the progression chain. But now here's some armor that's just nice to have. Now the top one is angler armor. And you can see um, the full set bonus is you take minus 30% damage from sea creatures, which is alright. But it increases the spawn chance by 4%. Now you're probably wondering what that means. And basically Hypixel has even custom fishing. So if you're fishing, you get normal stuff like fish obviously because you're fishing but you can also get sea creatures which when killed they drop lily pads and depending on their like what type they are they drop like if it's a sea walker which is basically like a sea zombie then it drops a rotten flesh but yeah so that's really good you always want the sea creatures they give you the best rewards when you're fishing and this is pretty much the go-to set for fishing and it is extremely cheap like it's so cheap that there should be a better set for fishing, but it's there's not. If you go here, you can see it's all the way up at 500 raw fish. And it costs 24 raw fish, which is extremely cheap. So that is really nice. And if we go back here, that is the best one for fishing. And depending on if you like fishing, it's a decent way to make money, but I find it kind of boring personally, but yeah so the next one is the crystal armor now this isn't very early game because it costs about five hundred thousand for the whole set but i still say it's decently early game and this is the best set for mana now i'm actually gonna show you guys and mana will be getting into later it's used for a lot of abilities on weapons and bows swords and bows it's not that great but it can be if i take my strong dragon armor off put this on and it depends you can see the full set bonus it gives you a lot of um intelligence based uh, base intelligence like on the piece but the full set bonus increases to 200 percent if you're on the highest light level and you can see i have 1272 mana and this can also be used with a strategy called armor swapping now i'm not going to let this go up all the way but because i'm lazy but let's say we took this off we switched out for a strong armor. You see we have... And now if we go back, you can see we have 959 out of 214. So it doesn't remove your mana to the cap. So you can have a lot of mana. This is really good just for that. If, it, if there wasn't that ability, I doubt this would be that good. Um, but there is. So it's quite good for mana. And then the last one is the farm boots. And they're not a set per se, but... I still thought I'd include them, and basically these are only good if you have a high farming level in your scales. Mine is 19, which isn't that high, but it's high enough for these to have a decent impact. Now the only reason you should ever use these is if you want to have speed, if you want to get faster. So if I was just to take off my boots, put these on, the effect is pretty fast. Like you can see how fast I'm going. I'm going quite fast. Compared to these, I'm just going like almost normal. I'm going a little faster than normal, but it's not really noticeable. And I put these on. So what they do is 
they have base speed. You can see they have 86 base speed plus one from the wise reforge, which we'll get into later. But they also gain two defense and four speed for every farming skill level I have. So if we go into here, I have a 19 skill level, which if you times that by, um, what was it again? Uh, it, was, it was four, then you get 76. So I have 76 speed from that, plus the 87 speed, which is 161, I believe. So that is a lot of speed just from these. And if you go into here, you can see I have 196. I guess I miscalculated somehow or something. Oh no, never mind. I'm stupid. No, that that base speed is um, that base speed takes into account the farming skill level. It's not base speed, it's from my skill levels, so that is all 87. So you can see I have 196, which is almost double to the base walking, uh, running speed. So that's nice. You can see at this speed, it's slowed down by jumping. So yeah, these are useful if you just want to get faster, but other than that, there's really not much usage for them. So the next ones we're going to talk about are weapons. Now, there's a lot of different weapons, but... There's really not that many early game ones that you should be going for. Um, I only have three in here, but there are a lot of later game weapons. But since this is mostly for early game, I thought I'd only include these. Now, there's a debate on which early game sword is best. Like, no one can really agree, but in my opinion, it's the undead sword. Now, ignore the fact that it has all those enchantments on it. If we take this, if we look at this, you can see... It has 30 base damage. Now, that is honestly garbage, but it's like a really early game sword, so it's excused. But it deals 100, you can see at the bottom there, it deals 100% damage to zombies, zombies, pigmen, skeletons, and withers. Not 100%, it deals plus 100%, so it deals double. So if you were fighting, let's say, like an undead mob, then it would be 60 damage. So that is useful because you can see there's deep caverns portal over there. The Deep Caverns has m mostly undead mobs, yeah, except for the slimes, but you shouldn't be killing those anyway. But yeah, this is really nice just for a really early game, just to have a quick um, DPS weapon for like uh, the undead mobs. But you shouldn't be on that too long because Silver Fang is next, which is noticeably better. It has 100 strength, or 100 damage, sorry, which is quite good, and it only costs... It's really cheap to make. I think it costs like 5000 on the auction house, so it's really cheap, so you should get this as soon as possible. But if you just want an early game weapon, then I would definitely recommend this. But as soon as possible, upgrade to this, because it's way better. And then there's not really any weapons to fill the gap, like that much. But I'd suggest getting an aspect to the end as soon as possible. Now, the stats are kind of screwed up. Just let me... This has a full set bonus that buffs its stats, so I'm just going to take one piece off so that doesn't apply, so you can see... Excuse me? That I don't have the full set on. Okay. Um, it just has to update, I think, or something? It's sh Okay, well, whatever. I'll just... Whatever. Do I have to hit something with it or something? Do I have to hit with it? Do I have to... Okay, whatever. So, it's supposed to be 100 strength, 100 damage, but it bu this buffs it by 75. You can see improves asset to the end, plus 75 damage. But it's still like that for some reason. I'm not sure why. But... This is 100 more strength than the Silver Fang, and that is really good because strength is a, a little better than damage on swords. Like, if you had 100 strength, 100, 150 damage, or 150 strength, 100 damage, you'd want to take the one with more strength. So that is a lot more damage than that. Now this is uh, probably costs about 130,000, 100,000. So it's more expensive, but again, there's not really a good sword or weapon between these. So if I was to take this out, now you can see there's an ability. These two didn't have abilities. They had, like, bonuses. This one had a bonus, but it didn't have an ability. Now, the reason you should get this is because its ability is really useful. It's pretty much the best ability in the game. And I'll show you why. Now, you can see we have still have our mana from... I can't really... We have our mana from the crystal armor. And if we were to right-click on this, this improves it a little bit, so I'm going to put this on. Teleport 8 blocks ahead of you and gain 50% speed, plus 50 speed for 3 seconds. Now, that might not seem that much. Like, 8 blocks isn't that much. But, I'm just going to um, 
put this on again just so we can get completely max mana. And I'll wait for a little bit, but this only uses 50 mana, you can see. And if we have over a thousand, we have some insane mobility. Like, this is really useful for, like, teleporting around. It's one of a kind, pretty much. So if we just take this off, put all this on. Just put that back in there. Don't really care how it looks. Watch this. We're just flying around. We're almost out of mana, but you can see, like, we're just flying around. It's really good for that. So you always want to have one of these. It's It shouldn't be your sword for... It could be your sword for a while. It was mine for a while, but again, I kind of screwed up my progression. Just like a lot of people that don't have access to a guide or something, that's why I'm trying to make this. But, yeah, this is really nice to have. You're going to use it late game. Everyone uses it. That's Everyone that has this uses it. So it's really useful. And that's pretty much it for the earliest game swords. You sh there's an aspect of the dragons which I have showcasing the enchantments. But that I only got that like a little while ago. So that's really not that early game. It's pretty late game. But yeah, I'm going to stop rambling now. So now let's go to the bows. Now what these do... Oh, sorry, my mouse just like teleported there. I don't know why. Now what these do is their bows, of course. And you might notice there's only one bow here. And that's because Hypixel, they kind of screwed up the bows. And there's only really one or two bows that are useful. So it's pretty much just this one. There's also, if you go to here, there's a hurricane bow. And this is pretty good, but it's really not worth it because you can see this costs a half, a stack and a half of enchanted bones and like some string that's nothing. And then the Runan's bow costs this much, which is not that much more expensive. It's probably like a few hundred thousand more expensive, probably like 400,000 more expensive, but it's just so much better. Now you might be thinking, looking at the stats, thinking, well, it only has like 40, 30 more strength, 60 more damage, but it shoots three arrows at a time. And now this is better considering one enchantment and criticals. So this is a little bit complicated, but let's go back to here and see. So the more kills you get using the bow, the more powerful it becomes. Reach 250 kills to unlock its full potential. Now 250 kills is really easy to get. It can probably be gotten in like half an hour, maybe less. But yeah, it's really easy. And at the max level, it shoots five arrows. Now compared to three arrows, that looks way better. But these arrows can't get a critical. So if I was to grab this and go shoot some mobs, um, I'll just go to the deep caverns. I'll just go to the blazing fortress or deep caverns or something as an example. So this is really slow without my aspect of the end. See, it's really, uh, okay. But I'm just going to teleport down to like just a random level, like slime hill or something. So let's say we were to shoot this, right? We we're to shoot this. Boom. 3,940 damage. Now, I'm pretty sure if we don't pull this back, it doesn't crit. And it pretty much does the same amount of damage. But you can see on a crit, we deal, if I can find a slime, on a crit, each arrow deals, or the middle arrow, de yeah, each arrow deals 3,940. Now, if we don't crit, it's the exact same damage other than we don't crit. We deal 1,000. So that is almost a four, that is almost a four times increase in damage. And with the runons, all three arrows can crit. They can all crit, but with the hurricane, only the middle one can crit. So it's way better to just have a runons. And you might be thinking, well, I mean, it still rivals this aside from the stats. So wouldn't you want to get this? Well, I will get into this in a little bit when we go over the enchantments. But just know that it's not. Just just, just don't go for the hurricane. I'd suggest just using a regular bell if you really need to. And then just getting Runons because it's pretty cheap. It's like 600, 
600,000, which is extremely cheap considering it's the best bow in the game. So yeah, and now if I just take this up in here, just showcase the bone chance. Now we're going to look at tools and enchantments and the same thing because tools aren't complicated at all. There's not really any custom tools except for axes. There's a few axes. And if I just grab one out here, the jungle axe, I forgot about those, but you can see this is just a sword just to use to showcase the enchantments. So this is going to be a while, so if you don't care about this, you probably just skip ahead. And if we look at it, it says sharpness 5. You probably know what that does. It increases the damage. And there's critical 5, which doesn't really... It's kind of self-explanatory, but basically what it does is it increases your critical uh, damage. It doesn't increase your chance at all. It just increases the damage. Now, this is all the good enchants. There's one enchant that you don't really need except for fighting dragons, which I'm going to discuss in another episode. But other than that, all these enchants you want. And then there's enchants you don't want, which I'm not even going to bother showcasing. So don't get an enchant that's not on here. And... Critical 5 increases your crit damage. And I'm going to have a link in the bottom that goes over like the exact numbers. But you could you could just look it up on the game in your collections or something. So, yeah. But anyways, First Strike 4, I do know the exact numbers for this one. It increases the first hit that you deal on an enemy. Like the first hit. If you hit them, hit them again, it only applies to the first hit. By 100%. So it's double damage. So that is really nice because... A lot of the uses for a sword, most of the uses for a sword are one-shotting things. So that is really useful for that. And then there's Giant Killer, which every... It increases the damage by a certain amount for how much health something has. More health something has. So if something had 50,000 health, I obviously don't even have close to that. I've, I've 1,200. So if it had 50,000 health, I would do a lot more to it. And then we have Execute, which if mobs get to a low enough health, it automatically kills them. So that's pretty nice, but obviously you're going to be one-shotting stuff most of the time. So you shouldn't really need that, but it's nice to have. Then there's Lethality, which isn't used that much, but it can be pretty good. And basically what it does is it reduces the effectiveness of the armor of the enemy that you hit. So that's pretty nice, but a lot of the mobs... like. One of the best ways of making money, which I will again discuss in another episode, doesn't it involves killing mobs that don't have armor. So, again, not that useful, but it's nice. Then we have Ender Slayer, which increases the damage you deal against Ender Men, and Ender Dragons, and Ender Mates. So that's pretty good. Then we have Cubism, which increases the damage you deal against Slimes and um, Magma Cubes. Then we have Impaling, which increases the damage you do to, like, sea creatures like we were talking about for fishing so it's pretty good but again it's not that necessary then we have vampirism which um it steals life in a different way you can see there's life steal there but it steals life in a different way than that does so they both like steal health from enemies but they both do it in different ways i can't really explain what but they're nice to have so get them then we have looting, which is also in the base game. So, yeah, you know what it does. It increases the drops you get. Like, if I killed a skeleton with no looting, it would give me usually, like, one or two bones. I don't think you can actually get two bones. But if I kill it with looting three, it would give me, like, three bones. So, it's nice to have. And then there's luck, which increases... It's like looting, sort of. But it increases the chance for a monster to drop its armor. If it, if it can drop its armor. So that's pretty nice to have. Then there's Scavenger, and it goes up to three usually, but there's obviously enchants that go up to four. Like, there's enchants that go up one higher level than the maximum, but those are hard to get, except for Scavenger 4, Lux 6, and um, there's one more, but I can't remember what it is. But yeah, those are pretty easy to get. So Scavenger 4, it increases how many coins you get from killing monsters every level. Like, if they're level 1, you'll get 1.2 extra coins. If they're level 30, you'll get 30 times 1.2 extra coins. Which is useful. And it's really good for just getting coins passively. You're not going to really want to farm mobs specifically because of that. But it's just nice for some extra money. 
Then we've experienced three, and this just increases the XP you get from mobs. It's pretty self-explanatory. And that can also go on like pickaxes, increases the amount of experience you get from mining ores. Then we have Thunderlord. Now this is the one that's only really useful for farming dragons and slayers, which again, I'll get into both of those in another episode. And this basically, if you hit something four times in a row, it strikes it with lightning, which does some damage, which is pretty nice. But again, you're mostly going to one-shot stuff except for those two, so it's not really that useful. And then we have telekinesis, and this is interesting because it automatically suctions the drops in and the XP automatically into your inventory. But if we were to grab something that doesn't have enchantments on it, or something that doesn't have telekinesis on it. All of these have telekinesis. I'll just grab this. And we were to um, go over here to deep caverns, but actually not, we're going to the gold mine. Um, if we were to come over here, there's a little NPC here that automatically adds telekinesis to your weapons, which is very nice to have because it reduces like the cost of like XP when putting enchantments on your sword. So this guy right over here, Rusty, if you pay 100 coins, it adds telekinesis. So that's really nice. You could do that after you have all the enchants on because if you do it before, it'll increase the XP cost. That makes sense. So yeah, but so you should never be like enchanting that. It's a hundred coins. It's nothing. You should never be enchanting that on an enchantment table. So yeah, and then we have also telekinesis on everything. Then for pickaxes, we have obviously experience. We have fortune three, which is like you know what that is. But inside of it, it increases your chance to gain double drops by thirty percent instead of going over double. So it's a little different, but it's its premise is the same. Then there's Smelting Touch, which is pretty common in like uh, custom Minecraft servers, and that just automatically smelts like ores you break into their smelted form. Like if you break cobblestone, it'll go to um, stone. If you break iron, it'll go to iron ingots. It's it's really useful. And there's telekinesis on it. And then for hose, there's one custom enchant harvesting five. It goes up to five. It grants a 62.5% chance to harvest double crops. So this actually makes hoes useful to harvest crops. So if you're harvesting a crop that is like insta-break, like anything but pumpkins and melons and all that, then use a golden hoe. Not a golden hoe, any hoe. So this isn't really a tool per se, but I thought I'd showcase it because it's really useful. I would definitely recommend you to buy one. They cost like... 50,000, but they make your life so much easier. Or no, I think they cost like 10,000 now. They used to cost 50,000. But look at this. It's a grappling hook. Boom. You can get around so much faster. Because the aspect of the end is nice, of course, for getting around. But your mana runs out, but this doesn't require mana. It just has a two-second cooldown. So you can just fly around everywhere. This combined with that, just a lot of mobility. Then for bows, we have a lot of enchantments. So there's Dragon Hunter 2, which you can see there. Now this can also go on swords. I just don't have it on this yet. Considering it costs a million coins for per Dragon Hunter 1 book. So this Dragon Hunter 2 costs me 2 million coins. And you can't get an enchantment table. So it's really expensive. And it just increases the damage you deal at Ender Dragons. And then we have Power 5, which just increases the damage. It's also in the base game. We have Snipe 3 which increases the damage that you deal by how far you are away from it. So the further you are away from it, the more damage you deal. Then there's that enchantment I was talking about that also makes us better than hurricanes. So that is aiming. Now, the thing about this that's so great is that all three arrows in the Runon's bow are affected by this. Only the center arrow of the hurricane bow is affected by this. Now you might be wondering, well, I mean, that doesn't seem how good could it possibly be and it's it, it's it's extremely good like i don't know how i'd live without this enchant if you go to like i don't know the diamond reserve or something let's just punch these guys to death because yeah I'm a, I'm a cool i'm a cool guy i don't even need a weapon i don't even need a weapon yeah arrows okay but can okay what whatever let's say i shoot over here it automatically homed it's literal homing arrows homing arrows and the higher the like level, 
the further away it can do it from. Like, if I was to shoot over there, it would just home all the way over there. Like, it, it's insane. So, yeah, that is really nice. Like, you can basically shoot anywhere. And then it'll shoot at the guy. Um, so, yeah. Like, if I just wanted to hit that guy, I would just be like, oh, whoops. Okay, well, that's too far away, but, like, one of them hit him. And, yeah, so that's basically that. It's really nice to have. I highly recommend you to get it. It's, like, one of the best enchantments for bows. I mean, of course, you want them all, all the good ones, that is, but this is, like, the best one. Now, if we go back to the enchantments, you can see there's infinite quiver. So, infinity, I guess, is a little overpowered, which does make sense. So, this just increases the chance to get an arrow back when you shoot it by, like, 60%. So, 40% of the time, you're going to lose that arrow. So, you don't actually use up, like, more than half the time, you're going to get your arrow back. But, infinity was just really overpowered. Then we have cubism, again. And we explained that before. You can't get Ender Slayer on bows, though. So, I don't know what the deal is there, but, yeah. Then we have Impaling, which again we discussed before, and Telekinesis. And there's also another enchantment called Piercing, and this is like also in the base game, just with crossbows. I'm pretty sure Skyblock added it first, but I can't remember. I feel like it probably didn't, but whatever. But yeah, anyways, it just increases like how many targets the bow can go through. I don't know why I don't have it, I kind of just didn't get it before, and then like forgot about it forever. And I really shouldn't have forgotten about it because it's nice because, like, you can chain really easily with the homing arrows. But, yeah, I don't know why I didn't get that. But then we have the jungle axe, and this is a custom tool. And what this does, if I was to, where can I showcase this? If I was to go all the way, I'm going the wrong direction. If I was to go all the way over here these trees this forest this forest then we would see just how good it is so you can see it has a two second cooldown and if I just run up to this tree right here boom obviously you can't do this all the time if you just do it there and then do it again it won't go and then you just wow look at how much wood I have look at how much wood I have it's so good. It's just so good. There's a better version of this called the Tree Capat... Tree Capitator, I think it's called. And I haven't really... It's a new-ish release. Like, I quit for a while, so I'm not really up to date on it. But as far as I know, it's just a jungle axe, but... With a slightly shorter cooldown, and it's a golden axe. So it's much faster. So, yeah. So that is nice. I'm just gonna... No, I'm not gonna check these off. Whatever. And that is nice. And yeah, that's basically it for that. So we have one more thing to... I need to just found a void. We have one more thing to discuss, and that is Reforges. So I'm going to go to a web browser, because I'm too lazy to get them all up. So here we are on a helpful forum post from last year, and it's still relevant today. So thanks to Professional Rose for making this. And this is just... Okay, I might as well just explain Reforges. You get them from the blacksmith near spawn. And basically it costs 100 coins, no, 250 coins to reforge a common item. And you get a random reforge from this massive list depending on like what um thing it is. And it also costs 500 for an uncommon item, 1000 for a rare, 2,500 for an epic and 5,000 for a legendary. Now, you can see they're divided into common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary. So, if we click on common, common all. Now, bizarre, let's say this is the first one. It doesn't change attack speed. It doesn't change defense. It gives minus 1% crit chance, minus 1% crit damage. 1 health, 3 intelligence, and 1 strength on common items. And this is a bad reforge. Like, there's literally... There's not much to... Like, I could teach you about every single reforge, but there's no reason. There's... 
There is a Reforge update coming out soon, so this won't be relevant for too much longer, but I thought I might as well go over it. Because again, who knows when the update's coming out. It's been months since Dungeons was supposed to come out, but yeah, that's clearly never coming out. But anyways, uh, I'm just going to go over the legendary stuff. So let's say, also the reason that you want to get higher rarity stuff is because if you go to legendary all, um, I guess they, uh, I guess they failed with that, but anyways, let's just go to, like, a sword. They also failed with that. Okay, let's go to a bow. Let's see deadly here. 10% crit chance, 10% crit damage, 10 intelligence, 10 strength. Now, that is quite good. But, if we go to common, common bow, it gives 1%, 1%, 1% and 1 strength, which is not that great. So, this gives a lot better. So, if we go to which ones are actually working. Okay, armor is working. So, let's say for armor, you're wondering, oh, what reforge should I get for my armor? And there's literally, like, one answer. And where is it? Godly. This is the only one you should get. If it gives 5% crit chance, 8% crit damage, 5 intelligence, 10 strength, it's just the best. Like, if you see if you see anything here, force will give 15 strength, which is good, but it gives 5% crit chance, 8% crit damage, and 5 intelligence, which outclasses that 5 strength. And then there's stuff that gives, like, 5% crit chance, 5% crit damage, which is already worse. 5% 5 of everything. But again, you're not really looking for health and defense. You're mostly looking for damage on your reforges. And this gives 10% crit damage, 10%, 10 strength. But 5 intelligence and 5% crit chance is much better. Because you want crit chance, you want to be able to get to 80%. Because then you could pop. A crit potion, which I will also get into in another episode, which increases your crit chance by 20%, so you could be up to 100. And yeah, so that's always you should get on your armor, godly. If you can't get godly, then I'd probably suggest going with strong. Uh, if you also can't seem to get that, zealous is basically godly but worse because you can see 5%, 8%, 5, 10, 5%, 5%, 5, 5. So yeah, um. Pure though, if you can't get pure, okay, never mind. Pure is way better than zealous because it gives five percent of everything except for um, speed. It gives one percent, but yeah, it just you can see it's the same stats. It just gives more stuff. So yeah. Um, for bows, it's basically um rapid. Fifty percent crit damage, ten, ten strength. And there's kind of a debate-ish, but it's not really a debate because Rapid is the best, but there's three Reforges that are decent. You can see Godly is kind of just not that great for this because there's three Reforges that are decent, and that is Rapid, Grand, and Unreal. So Unreal gives 50% crit chance, 50% 15% crit damage, and 15 strength. But the reason this isn't good is because swords, with the enchant that you want to get on swords, which I will discuss, or the reforge, which I will discuss in a second, it doesn't give crit, it gives 1% crit chance. So if you're getting 50%, you're, you're probably optimizing your crit chance for, with a sword, which means you would have 79%, and then when you're holding your sword, you'd have 80%. So you'd go, be going over 100%, over 100% crit chance, crit, if I could speak crit chance and that is just a waste so that's the reason this isn't good and grain gives 25 strength but 50 percent crit damage is better than that in my opinion but it could definitely be excused to go for that so any of those three is pretty good but obviously you want to go for rapid um and if you want for sword there's not really any legendary s there's a lot of legendary swords um, but those don't exist so we're gonna go to epic sword and there's not really any contest here. It's just spicy. That's that's all you want. Legendary is decent, I guess, but spicy is way better. At legendary, it gives 50% crit damage. One, still 1% 1 crit chance, like you see. And I think it's 5 strength. So this is really good because it just, it just gives stuff. And then legendary gives like 7% crit chance, 7% crit damage, intelligence, strength. And can we just talk about how bad odd is? 
Like, it, it's worse than a legendary. It gives minus 32 intelligence. It's just so bad. But anyways, yeah. So you want to go for spicy, legendary if you can't get that. Um, I guess you could be excused for going with, like, strong or something. Heroic? No, that's... Uh, heroic, I guess, is pretty good, too. Heroic's probably better than strong, but, like, just just get spicy. It's It's worth it. And then the last one is talismans. And I'll get into these in another episode. I'll probably have the reforges, but basically, if you want crit chance, go for godly or zealous. Godly and zealous are the same until you get to, I believe, epic. Then godly is better. But before that, godly and zealous are the same. And if you want crit, if you want damage, then go for itchy. Where is it? Itchy if they're rare and below. And if they're epic or legendary, get strong. And that's, yeah. That's basically it for that. So, I think we just covered everything. So, yeah, that is going to be it for this video. And if you have anything in specific I should do for the next part, then comment down below. And, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys uh, got some info from this. See ya.